Good afternoon. This is day 30 of our 40 days of prayer and fasting. And just once again, um, thankful that we are able to do this and that we can still connect despite all the things that we're facing. And again, in our community, um, continuing to face more restrictions in the quarantine. And it's just so good to know that uh, the gospel can still go out, that we can connect through uh, social media, through you know Facebook, the things we have, and we can connect with each other as we're praying together. So that's what we're going to continue to do. And like I said, today is day 30, and we are uh, talking about prospering our communities. And the scripture for today is Jeremiah 29.7 says, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Now, we may not have been carried off into exile, because again, this was written um, centuries ago, uh, thousands of years ago, whenever the Israelites were carried off into exile. But to know we're facing some unusual circumstances now. And some of us feel like we've been exiled to our homes uh, because we usually are just on the go so much. And so to know during this time, as we have to kind of change our routines, I just want to encourage all of us, as I'm encouraging myself, what can we do to grow? What can we do to make the most of this time? And I think one thing that we can do is grow in our relationship with God. And of course, to grow with our family. You know, if you are in uh, your home with your husband or wife and kids, um, you know, there's people around and just trying to find new routines and obviously homeschooling again for those that haven't had to do that before can be quite the challenging thing. But to know that there's things that we can do also to grow in our spiritual faith. And I just want to remind you as you're watching that if you're not connected with our Right Now Media resource, we kind of call it the Christian Netflix, they have over 10,000 videos and resources on this. And we as a church pay the monthly subscription so that you can be able to watch this. There's no charge to you. So how do you get connected? Well, you get connected through sending an email to us, and then we can send you the information of how to join. And in this, there's things for children, there's things for teenagers, there's things for adults. You can do individual Bible studies. There's movies that you can watch together as a family. All these things, and it's right at your fingertips. So again, right now, media, if you're not connected with that, I encourage you to let us know, send us an email, and we will give you the information to get connected. Another thing you can do is just um, get some books, you know, read some books. And some of the ones, and this, some of it goes back a while, but I remember reading um, The Power of a Praying Parent, especially when my son was going into his teenage years. There's also Power of a Praying Wife or Power of a Praying Husband. And these are books by Stormy O. Martin. Again, there's a lot of other resources, but I can just say with some of these, I've read through them, I have prayed through them, and they break it down into such wonderful areas. I mean, obviously, we're all praying for each other in this, but it really takes it into some specific things that maybe you're not thinking of if you're trying to just pray through this time. There's uh, the power to change your marriage. There is uh, prayer for couples that you can do together and just see, um, you know, that your marriage can increase. It can actually grow stronger in this time and these trials. Um, pow the power of a praying grandparent. I should get that one now because I haven't read that one yet, but I am in that place. And so these are things that we can do as we pray for our families and know that, you know, as we go back to the verse we read, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which we are exiled. 
well, the city for a lot of us right now can be confined to our homes. <laughs> so you can be praying for the peace and prosperity of the people in your home and even the people in your family that maybe you're not um, quarantined with right now, but you can be praying for them because that's one of the great things about being part of the family of God is we can reach out and touch one another through prayer no matter where we're at it doesn't matter about the distance we can be connected that way but i also want to share another verse and just some things that god put on my heart about our prayer time today prospering our communities that god would prosper our homes that god would prosper you know even we're going to again pray for those on the front line our healthcare workers that are out there just continually to press in and doing the things that um, they have to do in order to help us so we want to be praying for them but there's another scripture that talks about prospering in this time and it's uh third john 2 so again the reference is third john uh chapter 2 and it says um and i'm reading again in the uh passion translation it says beloved friend i pray that you are prospering in every way and that you continually enjoy good health just as your soul is prospering. So again, I'm just gonna read that so we can uh, think about what it's saying. Beloved friend, I pray that you are prospering in every way. So this is a prayer we are praying right now. And that you would continually enjoy good health. You know, Jesus is our healer. He is our redeemer. He has uh, already given us the provision to fight the coronavirus. And that's by his blood that was shed on the cross and by his stripes that we are healed. And it doesn't matter that this may be a new virus to our medical community. Obviously we're praying for vaccines and for medications that will uh, be able to fight this virus. But above it all, we have already been given the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that um, overcomes every disease and everything that would try to come against us because nothing has been created or nothing can come against us that the blood of Jesus cannot overcome and in fact already has overcome. So we can stand in that physical health, but then also declaring that our soul is prospering. So I wanna take a moment and focus in on that. What is our soul? It is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And again, that's something I think a lot of us are struggling with right now. And I would encourage you, if you didn't get a chance to listen to our service yesterday, it is available online. You can watch it on our Facebook page or watch it on our website or our YouTube page. And just know that you know we spend some time, especially at the end, praying for those that are dealing with fear and anxiety and just the panic and all the things that are coming against us that would affect our emotions, our minds, but also know that we can do things with our will. And this is a choice, choices that we make to help us learn and grow what we do with this time. You know, there's a Bible reference that talks about the sons of Issachar, and maybe you've heard people refer to that, how they understood the times that they were in. Well, that anointing isn't just an Old Testament anointing. That is something that is available to all of us who are a part of the family of Christ to know that God can give us discernment, that we can understand the times that we're in. And I just want to give an encouragement, even though, again, the quarantine we hear in our nation has been um, extended through the end of April, but I'm not just relying on the news that I hear to direct what I do. And that's what we want to stand on is we want to say, okay, God, what is your news in this time? What is your understanding of the times? Because this is just a season. It will change. So what do we do during the season to make the most of it? Well, one, we continue to pray. We can pray for medical staff. We pray for wisdom for our leaders. We pray for the breakthrough. But we also can continue to do things and say, God, what can I do to increase my skill set? 
skill set during this time? How can I learn? How can I improve? How can I do things with my family that we haven't had time to do other times of our lives because we're constantly on the run with kids going to school and us having to work or the different things that pull at us that right now we don't have? and we may be home, so what can we do? Well, we can press in and spend time with God. And one thing I would encourage on that note is for you to just dive into Philippians. The book of Philippians is only four chapters. So you know what? Each of us can read that every day. We can read the book of Philippians every day. And for me, I did that years ago when I was going through a particular dark time in my life and really struggling with depression and anxiety. I had panic attacks and I read Philippians over and over and over. And so that's why it's easy for me to go back to it and just know some of those key verses in these moments because I did it before. So I can do it again because you know what? God did it before. He brought me through that. So he's going to do it again. He's going to bring us through this. And again, not just to a place of, you know, what do we do now? And there's just famine all over the place. But I believe God is going to bring us through and he's going to prosper his people. And why is he going to do that? So that we can give to those around us, that we can give not only financially, and yes, there's financial needs all around us, but that we're going to be able to sow seeds of life, of hope, of encouragement, because people are going to be looking for that in not only the season that we're currently in, but when we get out of this season and we go back to work, there's going to be people around us saying, how do how are you surviving you know and they're going to be looking for some kind of hope um, because things will have changed we'll have a new normal but you know what god can make it even better than what we knew before and i believe for us that we can use this time to grow in our knowledge of him to grow in our time with him to even take online classes and learn new skills or increase in our skills so that when we go back that we can um, be even a bigger blessing for our employees for for our employers for our co-workers and whatever we do that we can do more that we can do it even better because god will prosper the work of our hands so there's a lot of promises that we can stand on during this time and i just want to encourage you as we begin to press in and pray and we're going to spend a few minutes in prayer to know that this season will pass but you know how do we prosper not only in our physical health but and yes in our finances we continue to sow into the kingdom of god we look at the example that i referred to yesterday in our message of isaac or isaac and in genesis 26 you can read about that where there was a famine in the land and it went on for a long time it wasn't just um, a few weeks of famine but they were in an intense famine and it says as you read on that isaac sowed during that time and in that same year so again i believe this is a word for us in this same year we are going to see god prosper us it said that he prospered and that he continued to prosper as he sowed seeds so i'm going to encourage you so so into the church so into your church if christ community isn't your church but sow seeds even in the midst of this time of lack and to know that God is going to take those special seeds and he's going to prosper them back to you, but also into his kingdom. And we are going to see his kingdom come and his will be done. And his will is for not only our communities to prosper, but our nation to prosper so that the gospel of Christ can spread across our nation and into the world because that is God's desire that all would come and know him. So we're going to press in, we're going to pray into these scriptures, and I encourage you now to join with me. Father God, we pray into 
Lord, this prospering our communities, our, our prayer focus for today. And first of all, we pray that you would prosper the work of the hands of those that are on the front lines. Father, those that are in the medical community that are uh, trying to be there and treat those that are suffering from COVID-19. Lord, that you would protect them from the virus. Lord, that you would give them supernatural strength. Lord, that you would somehow multiply their time Lord, that when they are able to rest, that they would rest so soundly that it would feel like it had been 12 hours of rest instead of maybe the four or five hours that they're getting. Lord, that you would multiply their rest. You would multiply their wisdom. You would bless and prosper the work of their hands, Lord, that, that this virus would be stopped in its tracks, Lord, that it will not continue to escalate. But again, we pray, Lord, that you would stop the virus. Lord, that you would give the medical breakthroughs. Lord, that you would bring the vaccines into play. Lord, that you would make the medications um, just readily available, Lord, the medications that will treat this. Lord, that you will give the medical community the resources they need. And again, right now, we just declare that you would multiply those resources, Lord, where there has been lack, that there will not be lack anymore in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for the families of those that are watching. Lord, I pray for our communities, Lord, that you would continue to prosper this, even as we hear the news of people being laid off. We all know people that may have lost their jobs. We know people in local businesses, Lord, that have had to shut down. Lord, that you will still continue to sustain them. And Lord, that when they come back in business, Father, that you will prosper them. Lord, we know in the natural, it doesn't make sense. But in your kingdom, in the supernatural kingdom of God, it does make sense because you are God and your promises are yes and amen. So Father, we declare prosperity to those businesses. We declare, Father, that we would all prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers, Lord, that right now we speak your peace, Father, your prosperity to our mind, our will, and our emotions, and even, Lord, that we will be able to grow in our knowledge and understanding of you. Lord, that you will give us spiritual wisdom and insight to understand the times and to know how to pray, and, Lord, that we can all be intercessors during this time. Lord, that instead of um, waiting till we get through this to be able to do something, Lord, that we can see that we can do something right now, that you have created each one of us for such a time as this. So, Lord, I just thank you as people of God that we can rise up in this time, Lord, and we say we will pray, we will intercede, we will be the ones that are going to answer the call, Father, to just be able to pray and fast during this time to see your hand move and do what only you can do, Lord. Lord. So, Father, I thank you that we can pray in agreement, Lord, as those that are watching now or whenever you watch this, Lord, that you are moving, that you are bringing healing to those physically that need physical healing. Father, that you would prosper their health. You would prosper just our peace, our finances, our well-being, prosper our families. And, Lord, we just pray, Father, that you would just overwhelm us with your peace, your hope. Let us hear your voice in new ways. Lord, that we would have revelation of who you are so that we will be able to share that with so many in the coming days, weeks, months, and years. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for every provision you have given us. In Jesus' name, amen. And I want to close out with one final verse. Again, Philippians 4, and this is verse 19. And we pray that my God will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. That's the God we serve. So we love you. We're continuing to stand and pray with you. Let us know if you have any prayer requests. And again, if you can, we encourage you to share this. It's an easy way that we can just get the good news out and hopefully encourage others that may have no other encouragement during their time of quarantine. Share the good news of the gospel. And again, we will join with you tomorrow, same time. God bless.